You know, companies rarely use the word never. Same goes for the word always. Guarantees like these are just too risky from a legal standpoint. Imagine if, say, Michelin started stating that their tires never ran flat. Imagine if Philips said their light bulbs never die. Not only would this be an extremely costly measure to defend in court, but it could potentially harm other things around it, including people and other expensive machinery. So when Deepcool designs a new all-in-one liquid cooler, and then puts this at the top of their webpage, your eyes should be doing this right here. Privacy.com is the easy way to shop securely online by creating virtual debit cards tied securely to your bank account. You can even download the browser extension and let it autofill card information with a single click. Get started for free and earn a $5 credit by clicking the link below today. So let's cut through the crap. What is the Captain 240 Pro? Well, it's Deepcool's latest AIO centered on addressable RGB functionality and a patented pressure relief valve, which regulates circulatory pressure via a bladder at the base of the radiator. Now we'll get into that more in a bit, but what I wanna first address is performance. Seeing as though nothing pertaining to cooling capacity is mentioned on the splash page, it makes sense to assume this cooler design doesn't venture too far from older Captain series performance. And sure enough, CPU temperatures between the Pro and older EX AIOs are virtually indistinguishable. This means that you should expect an effective TDP similar to or slightly better than that of a Cryorig H7 or Hyper 212 Evo in my own personal testing. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, we're just limited here in terms of the size of the radiator as well as the strength of the pump, which arguably is a bit weak. It's similar to an Asetek pump, but it's not an Asetek pump. The CPU block is certainly unique, and this one is uh, basically one of the big reasons why I think it's the best design overall in the business. Deepcool doesn't slap a giant logo on this thing, so you can turn this block any which direction without cringing at the sight of upside down text or anything of the sort. This is especially useful when the AIO is paired with a fairly large case. The tubing length is kind of short, so you may only be able to install the cooler in one particular orientation, and it's nice to not have that bias on the block. I'm also a huge fan of these RGBs and the way in which Deepcool managed to isolate individual zones. These plastic grooves replace the previous model's solid plate, and I think it's a step in the right direction. It's, again, more zone RGB based. A thin clear band wraps around the block's perimeter and syncs up with the grooves, by the way. The iconic U-shaped glass pipe is still present as well. Inside we've got zirconia ceramic bearings, which are basically those like cheaper diamond substitutes that have a relatively high degree of hardness and durability and there's also a dual chamber three-phase pump in here which does a decent job staying quiet even while operating at several thousand rpm so all in all there's nothing exceptionally brilliant going on inside of here uh, but i don't see anything alarming either and that's a good thing especially when it comes to something as precious as this because this right here could tank your entire system, and people who have had these leak in the past know exactly what I'm talking about. The two included 120 millimeter fans, by the way, are also RGB addressable and do a decent job staying quiet under a heavy load. An included fan hub makes cable routing much easier. You can sync up all the RGBs either with the included controller or via three pin RGB header on most motherboards. Support to date includes Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software, Asus Aura, MSI's Mystic Light Suite, and ASRock's Polychrome Sync. So at this point, if you're disappointed with the lack of a performance improvement with the model, don't be. I mean, this cooler can be purchased for just over 100 USD, and that's equivalent to the price of uh, the EX RGB version. So you're basically getting a little more for about the same price, and possibly added security with the new Pro model. But on just that, security, should you seriously expect this thing to never leak? And I'll be very blunt with you. My answer is no. You shouldn't expect this thing to never leak. I actually polled you guys on Twitter. I haven't checked the results, but I'm pretty sure a majority of you either said you were indifferent to the idea that you could trust Deepcool with this statement or you straight up didn't trust it at all. And that's because using the word never again, especially in this industry is just too risky. Uh, and it definitely puts them under uh, particular degrees of legal liability. I'm gonna be interested to see how this plays out for them in the long run. Granted, they are based in China, so I'm not sure how that would play into it, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's super irresponsible. So yeah, you shouldn't expect this thing to never leak, and there are several reasons why. For one, this AIO has several fail points. In fact, the iconic U-shaped glass tubing here is a huge point of failure for these coolers. That's not to say that a lot of them leak, failure rates are still pretty low according to Deepcool's own record, but if the 240 Pro does leak, I'd bet money it'd be right around here. 
The reason why has to do with the material used. Remember the glass? Glass is rigid and requires a higher degree of precision to properly seal. It can also shatter during shipping. Most AIOs avoid using glass or acrylic for this very reason and instead stick to something that's a little more flexible. Uh, you know, we have braided tubing. That's what we always see. Uh, we've seen that for the past 10 or so years. Uh, since AIOs have really become a big thing, I'd say over the last four or five years, we've always seen the flexible kind of braided or rubber or silicone tubing. And there's a good reason for that. They've stuck with that because it is reliable and easy to work with. Rubber and silicone are flexible, easy to seal, easy to reinforce, and can handle significantly higher degrees of tension in closed systems. They're the logical choices, right? So when Deepcool tries to be different and include real glass, they're introducing an additional variable and thus point of failure. Technically though, three points of failure if you count both ends where they're supposed to be sealed and the tube length itself which could shatter, you know, even a small little pinprick could cause a leak. The pressure relief valve found at the base of the radiator is designed to relieve this pressure, the influxes of pressure I should say, basically pockets of air that are introduced into the system. Gas consumes a relatively wider volume, compresses the liquid, increases the pressure in the loop and thus stresses these various points of failure, especially the glass seals. So Deepcool did something about it. Instead of removing the iconic glass tube, but they decided to include this, a pressure relief valve. That's what they're calling it. And it's actually a semi-flexible bladder tied to the atmosphere, which means it's connected to basically the environment directly. When pressure spikes are introduced, large or small, the bladder compresses and that vents more air occupying the space. So this would effectively decrease the bladder size, increase the effective volume of the loop, and when volume increases in a closed system, the resulting pressure drops. It isn't a foolproof technique and the science behind it is fairly elementary, but it could certainly mitigate slight bumps in pressure, no doubt about it. Now the issue I have with this though is that the relief valve's viability is tied directly to an issue it can't mitigate, and that's a break in a seal or a crack somewhere else in the system. First of all, if we assume the loop operates at a pressure slightly higher than atmospheric, then it's significantly less likely, right, for air outside of the loop to make its way into the loop that's operating at a higher pressure. So one of the ways we know this happens in the real world is by, you know, syringe or forced injection. Some water cooling companies do this with their AIOs to test tolerances up to 30 or even 40 PSI, but that's just it. They have to literally force additional air into these systems. An AIO can certainly leak from a pressure spike, but the likelihood of one occurring in your typical everyday AIO is relatively low. So what's the alternative then? Well, excluding outliers like improper sealing and collision, a majority of AIO failures stem from um, pump failures. This is typically exhibited by a steady rise in core temperatures to the point where they massively throttle themselves or shut down entirely. We can simulate this by simply refusing to connect the pump cable. I don't want to kill one of my CPUs or risk damaging it, or the AIO for that matter, uh, but a possible outcome from such an event could be a leak. But why? when the fluid gets too hot. Most AIOs are filled with a water base mixed with various corrosion inhibitors, and when it all reaches an unhealthy temperature, seals could expand and break. That's what heat does. And there's your leak. What's a healthy fluid temperature, you ask? It really depends, but I'd be uncomfortable if temperatures approached 50 degrees Celsius in a custom loop, so something similar for AIOs as well. If your pump fails, all heat generated by the CPU saturates the block side of the AIO because you have no circulation, right? And could force fluid temps in un into uncharted territory, I'll just leave it at that, upwards of 70 or 80 degrees if left uh, long enough. This is far outside recommended levels, at which point the integrity of the system is in jeopardy, and pretty much any, you know, <laughs> any guarantee you have with an AIO like this is out the window. So I say all that to say this, Deepcool's pressure relief valve, while cool in principle, is nothing new per se. I mean, some custom water coolers have been implementing similar bleed off valves for years, and they're also typically in the rads. But to say that because of this right here, <laughs> that the entire AIO will never leak is just a bit disingenuous. And the more I study this mechanism uh, and the AIO as an entire system, the more I realize that this is the case. I guarantee that if I pulled hard enough, I could break the seal around the glass. There's your leak. If I left the pump unplugged and let a Core i9-9900K you know, do its thing, something would probably break. There's your leak. And a pressure relief valve won't do a damn thing while all of this is happening. So that's what I, I really want you guys to, to take away from this, is that it really only solves part of the problem, and that's why I have an issue with Deepcool just blanket stating the fact that their coolers will never leak 
because of that valve, because it really doesn't solve all of the concerns. And look, I know that, you know, not plugging in the pump is a cheap shot. Obviously, that's gonna run this thing out of spec intentionally, and, you know, if I really wanted to force something loose, I'm sure I could do that. They're not expecting you to do that, but that's why you don't say never in this industry, because it could be user error. I mean, look, I blew up two power supplies thinking I was using the correct cables when I wasn't. We all remember that. Uh, so, it, you know, if Deepcool had said, this is a, a great way to mitigate leaks, it's not foolproof, but it's pretty darn close, I, I could probably vibe with that. I mean, saying even pretty close is a stretch, and I think most of us with half a brain would know why, uh, but this is, again, I mean, you can't use the word never with this. Uh, this would never, I, I don't know. I don't even know how they could sell us in the US market using that as you know their marketing tool by stating that it never leaks, because we all know that it can. Uh, and even if I don't intentionally do something, let's say the pump fails. That happens a lot, okay? If a pump fails in an AIO, I mean, I say a lot, but you know what I mean. It, if the AIO dies, it's because of the pump more than likely. If the pump dies, then there you go. I didn't intentionally do anything about it. You know, I didn't intentionally sabotage the AIO. It kind of did it to itself, but that could result in a leak. And often that is what happens. That the fluid just gets too hot, a seal breaks, and there you go. Whether it be on the block or, uh, you know, toward the radiator side, the seals between the radiator and the tubing, it could really be anywhere. There could just be a hole somewhere in the rad. There's your leak. You can't use the word never, you just can't. So the relief valve is designed to mitigate pressure spikes, not pressure leaks. And that's why a claim like this, in my opinion, is a stretch of the truth. So why then can a company like Deepcool get away with it? And why can they get away with it specifically in US markets? Well, for starters, they're based out of China. So if you bought this cooler and noticed it leaking, you'd be hard pressed to find a lawyer willing to sue. And that's assuming you had the finances required to do it in the first place. And this again is a huge reason why companies avoid words like this. Saying that something never happens to a particular product often associated with that very thing is ballsy at best and careless at its worst. And as for US markets, US retailers, imagine if Deepcool started shipping these worldwide. I mean, they already do basically. You can find these on Newegg, you can find them, I think on Amazon. If they're not on Amazon yet, I'm sure they'll be there shortly. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden we started getting reports that these leak, right? The source is Deepcool. We would blame Deepcool, but then we might also blame Newegg. We might also try to blame Amazon for selling a product that is falsely advertising its own viability, its own durability. And that could be a problem for the retailers. So I'm not sure how long they're gonna be able to get away with this. My thinking is that this is something that is short-lived. I'm sure it'll just magically disappear one day. We won't hear anything about the no leak scenario anymore. It'll just, it just won't be on the page and that's how they'll fix it. That's how they'll remedy it. Uh, but for those of us who are buying into this, who are buying these products thinking that they're just not gonna leak because some magical valve is correcting every issue that could ever go wrong with an AIO, I mean, we're gonna be let down. We're gonna be disappointed and some of us might try to do something about it. It will be very costly, but Deepcool should be worried and I don't know, my own tu my intuition is telling me that it's probably gonna be stressful for Amazon and Newegg too. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, but I would be concerned if I was them as well. I mean, this is why companies like Corsair and ZXT, Fractal Design, Be Quiet, and others have never used this wording. Not that they could even get away with it in the European and American markets anyway. Even if we assume they thought of implementing a similar valve, which I'm sure they have, the risks are not eliminated and they'd never legally be able to make such a claim. So deep cool, if you're watching, and I'm sure you will because I'll link this video to you, I know what you're trying to say, I get it but the way you're wording it is misleading and our viewers deserve to know. So do I recommend the cooler? Actually, yeah, I do, but not for the reason you think. I, I think it looks beautiful and it does the job any 240mm AIO should. It isn't overpriced. It's the same price actually as the previous model and it stays quiet even under load. Installation is easy. The fans are decent quality. The software integration is spot on. I really like it. Just don't buy it expecting it to never leak. And I feel like that's what Deepcool's kind of hinging this whole sale on is the fact that it won't leak because we know that's not true. The company doesn't have like a crystal ball to see the future and see that none of these will ever leak. So let me know what you guys think about the Captain 240 Pro down below, what you think about the no leak thing, and be sure to check it out via our affiliate link in the video description. Again, remember, 
don't buy this cooler thinking it's not going to leak. That said, I think it's a great cooler. It looks very well built. I would say the failure rates on these are going to be as low, if not lower, than the EX variants, uh, and they were already pretty low to begin with. Again, most of the leaks either come from failed pumps or from something going wrong with the glass tubing. Um, but yeah, the failure rates for these coolers used to be quite a bit worse, and they've gotten significantly better over time. The more you do something, the more familiar you are with it, the better you can typically kind of sculpt the product to fit the needs of the consumer. And uh, my ultimate goal here is just to pass along the the tip that you shouldn't buy this thinking it's not going to leak. That said, it is still a great cooler. So I'm gonna you guys think about the video. Thumbs up if you liked it, dislike it, feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, click that red subscribe button if you haven't already become a member, if you wanna be fancy, and we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning. Yes.